In the movie Interstellar, the main character, Cooper, escapes from a black hole in time to see his daughter Murph in her final days. Some have argued that the movie is so scientific that it should be taught in schools. In reality, many scientists believe that anything sent into a black hole would probably be destroyed. But a new study suggests that this might not be the case after all. When it comes to our understanding of the universe, the 20th century was full of surprises. A little over 100 years ago, we thought the Milky Way galaxy was home to everything we could see in the sky. We thought the universe was static, unchanging, and possibly eternal, governed by Newton's law of universal gravitation. Well, all of that changed dramatically in the span of a few short years. Einstein's general relativity replaced Newton's theory of gravity, explaining the connection between matter, energy, and the structure of space-time. According to his equations, the universe couldn't be static but had to change over time, a concept confirmed by the discovery of the expanding universe. His theory also predicted the existence of black holes, which were later observed, detected, and even directly imaged. All of these discoveries presented a wild and speculative idea. What if our universe originated from a black hole? Could it be possible that our universe was born from a black hole that formed in a larger parent universe? And is it possible that new universes are born every time a new black hole is created? Let's find out, shall we? Some scientists propose that before the existence of humans, Earth, the ignition of the sun, or the emergence of galaxies, and even before there was light, there was an event known as the Big Bang. This event took place approximately 13.8 billion years ago. But what about what came before that? According to many physicists, there may not have been a before in the traditional sense. They argue that time itself began with the Big Bang, and thinking about anything earlier isn't part of scientific inquiry. Understanding what the reality was like before the Big Bang, what it consisted of, or why it led to the creation of our universe, is likely beyond our grasp and human comprehension. However, a few unconventional scientists have a different perspective. They suggest that just before the Big Bang, all the mass and energy of the early universe were compressed into an incredibly dense but finite point. Let's call this point the seed of a new universe. This seed is believed to have been incredibly tiny, possibly trillions of times smaller than any particle we've ever observed. Surprisingly, this tiny particle could trigger the creation of every other particle, along with galaxies, solar systems, planets, and even living beings. Some have even likened it to what people call the Higgs boson. So, how did this seed come into existence? One idea discussed for several years, particularly by Nikodem Poplowski from the University of New Haven, is that the seed of our universe was formed in the most extreme environment in nature, inside a black hole. The idea is that the seed of a universe is like the seed of a plant, a core of essential material, densely packed within a protective shell. This closely resembles what's formed inside a black hole. Black holes are the remnants of massive stars. When such a star exhausts its fuel, its core collapses. Gravity becomes incredibly powerful, creating temperatures of up to 100 billion degrees. Atoms break apart, and electrons are torn apart into smaller pieces. By this stage, the star has become a black hole with such strong gravity that not even light can escape. Enormous black holes, some millions of times more massive than the Sun, have been found at the center of many galaxies, including our Milky Way. If we apply Einstein's theories to understand what's at the very center of a black hole, we arrive at a point that's infinitely dense and infinitesimally small. This hypothetical concept is known as a singularity. However, Infinities are not typically seen in the natural world. The issue arises from Einstein's theories, which work well for most of the universe, but struggle with extreme forces, like those inside a black hole or during the universe's birth. Physicists like Dr. Poplowski propose that the matter inside a black hole reaches a limit where it can't be compressed any further. This seed may be incredibly tiny, with the mass of billions of suns, but unlike a singularity, it is real. Over 40 years ago, Stephen Hawking surprised the scientific community by revealing that black holes aren't completely black as previously thought. According to classical physics, once something enters a black hole, it should never come out. However, Hawking demonstrated that when we consider quantum effects, black holes actually emit radiation over time. The challenge is that for most black holes in space, this radiation is too faint to detect with our current technology. 
Hawking's calculations present a puzzle. As black holes emit radiation, they lose mass and eventually evaporate. This leads to a paradox, as it suggests that the information about what fell into the black hole is lost forever. In the world of quantum mechanics, this goes against a fundamental principle that information cannot be created or destroyed. Another way to look at this is that Hawking radiation poses a problem with determinism for black holes. Determinism implies that the state of the universe at any given time is uniquely determined from its state at any other time. This is how we can trace its evolution both astronomically and mathematically. This means that the loss of determinism would have to arise from reconciling quantum mechanics with Einstein's theory of gravity, a notoriously hard problem and the ultimate goal for many physicists. Black hole physics provides a test for any potential quantum gravity theory. Whatever your theory is, it must explain what happens to the information recording a black hole's history. It took scientists 20 years to find an answer. They proposed that the information inside a black hole is related to its surface area in two dimensions, not its volume in three dimensions. This idea can be understood through quantum gravity, which suggests that the three-dimensional space can be reconstructed from a two-dimensional world without gravity, similar to a hologram. Soon after, string theory, one of the most explored theories in quantum gravity, was also found to have holographic properties. Using holography, we can describe the evaporation of the black hole in the two-dimensional world without gravity, for which the usual rules of quantum mechanics apply. This process is deterministic, with small imperfections in the radiation encoding the history of the black hole. So holography tells us that information is not lost in black holes, but tracking down the flaw in Hawking's original arguments has been surprisingly hard. One of the defining features of a black hole is the existence of an event horizon which is a boundary that tells a very different story for an object outside of it versus one inside of it. Outside of a black hole's event horizon, any object will experience its gravitational effects as the space will be curved by the black hole's presence, but it can still escape. If it moves fast enough or accelerates quickly enough in the proper direction, it won't necessarily fall into the black hole, but could break free of its gravitational influence. When an object passes through the event horizon of a black hole, it's destined to be pulled into the black hole's center. Inside a black hole, the curvature of space-time is incredibly intense, causing an object to reach the singularity within a very short time after crossing the event horizon. This process also increases the mass of the black hole. For an observer outside the event horizon, it appears as though the black hole is forming, gaining mass, and growing over time. But what does all of this have to do with our universe? If we were to account for all the different types of matter and radiation we can measure in the observable universe, we'd need to include the following. Normal matter, made of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Neutrinos, which are elusive particles that interact rarely with normal matter. Dark matter, a mysterious substance that makes up most of the universe's mass but remains undetectable. Photons, the particles of light that carry energy from every electromagnetic event in cosmic history gravitational waves, generated whenever a mass moves and accelerates through the curved fabric of space-time. Our instruments can detect objects up to about 46 billion light-years away in every direction. By adding up all the energy from these different forms of matter and radiation throughout the entire observable universe, we can determine the universe's equivalent mass using Einstein's famous equation E equals mc squared. Next, you might wonder what would happen if the entire universe were squeezed into a single point. The answer is the same as if you condensed a large amount of mass or energy into a tiny point. It would create a black hole. What's fascinating about Einstein's theory of gravity is that if this mass or energy collection lacks an electric charge and isn't spinning, without angular momentum, the black hole's size is solely determined by its total mass. This size is referred to as the Schwarzschild radius by astrophysicists, Surprisingly, the Schwarzschild radius of a black hole with the mass of all the matter in the observable universe is nearly the same as the size of the visible universe itself. This observation seems like an extraordinary coincidence and raises the intriguing possibility that our universe might somehow exist within the interior of a black hole. But that's only the beginning of the story. As we dive deeper, things get even more interesting. 
In the mid-1960s, a groundbreaking discovery changed our understanding of the universe. Scientists found a constant and uniform low-energy radiation coming from every direction in the sky. This radiation had the same temperature in all directions, measuring at 2.725 Kelvin, just a few degrees above absolute zero. It had a spectrum similar to that of a hot object, like a perfect black body, and looked the same no matter where you observed it in the sky, with tiny variations. This radiation, initially called the primeval fireball and now known as the cosmic microwave background, provided crucial evidence that our universe is expanding and cooling because it was hotter and denser in the past. As we look further back in time, the universe was smaller, more uniform, and more compact. If we trace it all the way back, this scenario of the hot Big Bang seems to approach a singularity, similar to the extreme conditions found at the center of black holes, a place where the normal laws of physics break down. When you look at how black holes work, something fascinating stands out. Imagine you're just outside a black hole's boundary called the event horizon, and you move away from the black hole as far as possible. Your distance from the black hole, represented as R, goes from a certain point called the Schwarzschild radius, R, to infinity. On the other hand, if you're already inside the event horizon and you measure your distance from the black hole to its very center, your R value changes from the Schwarzschild radius, R to zero. Now, why is this important? It's significant because when you compare the characteristics of space outside the event horizon, from R to infinity, with those inside it, from R to zero, you find that they are exactly the same at every location. By making a simple change and using the reciprocal of R, which is one over, you realize that the inside of the black hole is mathematically identical to the outside. Think of it this way. Black holes are like a mysterious room with a special boundary. If you're just outside the room and you move away from it, you'll notice your distance from the room increases from a specific point to infinity. This point is similar to the Schwarzschild radius. Now imagine you're inside this room and you want to measure your distance to its very center. In this case, your distance decreases from that special point to zero. What's remarkable here is that when you compare what's happening inside the room, from the special point to zero, with what's happening outside, from the special point to infinity, you discover that they are the same at every spot. It's as if the inside and outside of the room are mathematically indistinguishable, much like how the inside and outside of a black hole behave in a similar way. Over the past few decades, our understanding of the universe has improved, and two significant discoveries have reshaped cosmology. The first is cosmic inflation, which suggests that the universe didn't originate from a singularity. Instead, it seems that the universe began with a rapid, continuous expansion. Think of it as a phase of constant and fast growth, driven by some energy inherent to space itself. This inflation happened before the hot Big Bang phase started. The second was dark energy. As the universe expands and becomes less dense, distant galaxies start to recede from us at an accelerating rate. With a much smaller magnitude, the universe behaves as though there's some sort of energy inherent to space itself, refusing to dilute even as the expansion of space continues. For as long as inflation and dark energy have both been around, people have speculated that there might be a connection. What could this connection be? Once again, black holes might hold the answer. Black holes gain mass when matter falls into them and lose mass through Hawking radiation. Is it possible that changes in the size of the event horizon affect the energy woven into the fabric of space for an observer within the event horizon? Could it be that what we perceive as cosmic inflation signifies the birth of our universe from an extremely massive black hole? And could there be a link between dark energy and black holes? Does this imply that as astrophysical black holes form within our universe, each one might give rise to its own baby universe within? These ideas have been around for a long time, but lack a conclusive or provable answer. Nonetheless, numerous models and concepts are in circulation, and this avenue of exploration remains fascinating for those who study black holes, thermodynamics, entropy, general relativity, and the origins and fate of the universe. Well, unfortunately, all the physical models proposed so far have not met three critical criteria. They haven't replicated all the known successes of the inflationary hot Big Bang theory, such as explaining observed phenomena. They haven't clarified or accounted for observed phenomena that the current leading theory can't explain. 
they haven't made new predictions that differ from those of the current leading model, which we could then test. One well-known attempt at this is Roger Penrose's conformal cyclic cosmology, which does make a unique prediction different from the standard cosmological model, the existence of Hawking points, or areas in the cosmic microwave background with unusual temperature variations. Unfortunately, these features aren't consistently seen in the data, making the notion that our universe emerged from a black hole and that black holes create new universes remain in the realm of speculation. There are compelling aspects to the idea that black holes and the birth of universes might be connected, both from physical and mathematical viewpoints. It's possible that our universe's birth is linked to an incredibly massive black hole from a previous universe, and it's also plausible that each black hole created in our universe could give rise to a new universe. However, what's currently missing is a distinctive signature that can definitively confirm or reject this idea. This is a significant challenge for theoretical physicists, finding evidence in our observable universe that sets this new idea apart from our existing theories. Until we achieve that breakthrough, these concepts will likely remain speculative hypotheses. While we can't say for certain whether our universe emerged from the creation of a black hole, it's an intriguing possibility that we shouldn't dismiss at this stage. And that's it for the video. Thanks for watching and watch my video about cosmic inflation here.